Greater is he that is in you, Numbers 23, verses 1 to 30. In 1 John 4.4, 4, the Apostle John exhorts, exhorts us that the Spirit of God in us is greater than the spirits of the world, and therefore we are protected by the Lord, sealed till the day we see Him face to face. 1 John 4.4 4 says, Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them. Greater, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. He that is in you, the spirit of God that is in you, is greater than all the other evil spirits that is in the world. And Paul likewise says in, first, in Ephesians 1 verses 13 to 14, concerning our salvation in Christ, how it is sealed by the Holy Spirit unto the day of our redemption, in whom ye also trusted, after that ye, have, he, after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after that ye believe, ye were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise, which is the earnest of our inheritance, until the redemption of the purchased possession unto the praise of His glory. God's protection upon His people can be broken, cannot be broken by the wants and fancies of the enemies of His people. The Christian life is characterized by joy, a joy that comes from God. Um, the Apostle John says, That which we have seen and heard declare we unto you, that ye may have fellowship with us, and our fellowship is with the Father and with His Son. And these things we write, that your joy may be full. Dr. Martin Lloyd-Jones, he said, well, there were Christians in a very difficult and gainsaying world. Yet John, now an old man, writes to them to say that although the whole world lieth in wickedness, right, later we'll see how um, the... The people of Moab, the king, uh, Balak, uh, sought to curse the people of, of Israel, the people of God. Nevertheless, it is possible for them to have a joy, a fullness of joy, in spite of it all. But there are things that try to break our fellowship with God, and there are things that will tend to make us less conscious of the fact that we are God's children. There are three main things that we must watch to keep the strong bond with God that brings joy to the heart despite the hardship of life. Firstly, we are to keep His commandments. We are to love one another and we are to be careful of false teachings. This would be the proof that we are the children of God. And here, uh, when you look at 1 John 4, he begins by exhorting us of the danger of false prophets and false teaching. Balaam was asked to curse Israel, whom God hath blessed. Um, you cannot uh, do that, uh, which is against the will of God. Beware of false prophets. He speaks with endearing treaty. And here you see John speaking, uh, expressing to his people, uh, calling them beloved. Why? Because he had great affection concerning their spiritual well-being. He says, uh, and I quote in what Paul says in Ephesians 6 verse 12, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Now we have not received the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God, that we might know the things of God freely given out to us of God. God gives us His spirit, and the spirit of God protects us. And the spirit of God is a spirit of truth. Right? We cannot deny the truth. Now, there is a willingness and readiness to listen to scripture teaching and to abide by it. And that is always a characteristic of a true prophet. 
when there is a tendency not to abide by the teaching of Scripture and to be contemptuous of it, it has always been the characteristics of those who tended to go astray. Bear in mind what we shall see uh, in the life of the prophet uh, Balaam. Right? Uh, how he uh, chose, uh, enticed uh, by uh, Balak and his persuasion uh, to go a long way with him uh, to uh, curse the people of God. But as we saw um, the last time we met, that even the donkey, <laughs> even the donkey spoke to uh, stop uh, Balaam from committing folly. For it is to his harm. Right? God has sent the angel, an angel with a slot, sword uh, raised out, uh, ready to uh, inflict harm right? uh, for Balaam's, uh, uh, well, choice uh, to uh, do that which God does not permit, namely to curse the people of Israel. And so you would see uh, that um, here, uh, when there is a tendency not to abide by the teaching of Scripture and to be contemptuous of it, uh, the characteristics of those who tended to go astray, uh, Balaam uh, went his way. Uh, still, you know, after his, uh, he saw the angel in the way, uh, he carried on, uh, he carried on uh, his journey with uh, Balak, uh, a man who glorifies Christ and puts him at the center, giving Christ the preeminence, he doesn't speak about his experiences, rather about Christ. There's a holy attraction towards glorifying Christ, to obey his word, to follow him, to do what he says. We have to realize that any teaching where Christ is not the center is not true Christian teaching. He readily receives a scripture and willingly obeyed for life. There is a happy, willing spirit in confessing Jesus Christ of the Scripture as Lord and Saviour. The believer finds hope and help in Christ and there is a life that emanates from such a life. Right? John 1 verse 4 says, In Him was life and the life was the light of men. But there is also the spirit of the Antichrist, an opposing spirit to the propagation of the spirit of Christ. And that was what we, that is what we are seeing here. Right? Uh, Balak right? sought an opposing spirit to the will of God. Right? There is a deliberate attempt to thwart the progress uh, of the people of God, of the gospel, through falsehood and deception. The spirit of pride, the first sin was found in Lucifer, the archangel. It resulted in his fall. And that is that spirit of the Antichrist, right? a rebellion against God and His dominion and His rule in our lives. Right? This, way, this is where what we saw, uh, what we have seen in the last chapter. And now uh, Balak, uh, in his insistence, uh, set up seven altars. Uh, it will be done at three different locations. Right? And Balaam will be brought to these three locations uh, to offer sacrifices, right? uh, great ceremony in order to, as it were, thwart the will of God. Will they succeed? When we have Jesus Christ, we have everything we need. This is the truth of His Word. When men sought sufficiency outside Christ, uh, that is the beginning of trouble. There will be the leer, the battle to leer, secure God's people to straying, right, straying. And the Apostle John shares the comfort of the Holy Spirit in dwelling the believer to help him overcome and live a victorious Christian life. Could Balaam not understand the will of God? Should he have gone so far? Nevertheless, I say unto you, I tell you, Jesus says in John 16, verse 7 to 11, it is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go away, 
the Comforter will come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. When, and when he is come, he will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment, of sin because they believe not on me, or of righteousness because I go to my Father and ye see me no more, of judgment because the prince of this world is judged. John 16, verses 13 to 14. How be it when he, the Spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall speak, not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. He shall glorify me, for he shall receive of mine, and shall show it unto you. It was the Holy Spirit that led the church to identify the canon of the scriptures. How do we know uh, the, the 39 books of the Old Testament, 27 books of the New Testament, forming the 66 books? Of, of the scriptures. As men come together to pray, the, the scripture provides the guideline and confirms the books of the Bible. It is by the guidance of the Holy Spirit uh, in which the using of scripture lead the believer into living the life that is pleasing to God. So the Holy Spirit brings Salvation to the soul, as we mentioned in Ephesians 1, 13 to 14. The Holy Spirit enables the believer to overcome the spirit, the Antichrist spirit that pervades the world. He leads you to the truth. He illumines your heart, illumines your heart to understand and to take hold and to abide by the truth. Um, the believer needs to understand that the Holy Spirit is superior to the spirit of the Antichrist. When we are given Given out, when we have given our life over to Jesus, the <laughs> evil spirit of the world cannot possess and dis dislodge uh, our position before God. Uh, being a person uh, that is born again uh, of God, when we are walking alone in a dark alley, there can be a sudden fear that grips us. Beware that the Holy Spirit is more powerful than the evil spirit, the ghost. Right? You need to take hold of the truth of God's word and find that stillness of heart to trust God and not fear. You have committed your life to Jesus. The evil spirit cannot possess you. And when we share the gospel with those outside God's kingdom, when they repent of their sins and come to faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit indwells them, giving them the strength to live life. Here we see right, that the Spirit of God will lead us to the truth. But here you see that there is always in the world uh, an enticement for us to deviate, to stray right, from the truth. And we shall see here three attempts, uh, three attempts by Balak. Uh, and Balaam said unto Balak, Build me here, verse 1, seven altars, and prepare me here seven bullocks. And Balak said unto Balaam, did as Balaam had spoken, and Balak and Balaam offered every, on every altar of a bullock and a ram. And Balaam said unto Balak, Stand by thy burnt offering, and I will go, for adventure the Lord will come and meet me. And whatsoever he showed me, I will tell Thee. And so you see here, why is uh, uh, Balaam right, insisting right, on uh, wanting to uh, test the will of God? Did not God say very clearly to him, uh, this is what uh, it will be? Uh, they must, he must not uh, curse the people of Israel. And yet you see here Balaam right, instructing Balak right, to build uh, the seven altars. And God met Balaam and said unto him, I have prepared seven altars and I have offered every altar a bullock and a ram. And the Lord put a word in Balaam's mouth and said, Return unto Balak and thus shalt thou speak. And he returned unto him and lo, he stood by his burnt sacrifice and he and all the princes of Moab. And he took up his parable and said, Balak, king of Moab, hath brought me from Aram out of the mountains of the east, saying, Come, curse Jacob, and come, defy Israel. How shall I curse whom God hath not cursed? 
or how shall I defy whom the Lord hath not defied? For from the top of the rocks I see him, and from the hills I behold him, and lo, the people dwell alone, and shall not be reckoned among the nations. Who can count the dust of Jacob? And the number of the fourth part of Israel, let me die the death of the righteous, lest let, and let my last end be like his. And Balak said unto Balaam, What hast thou done? I took thee to curse my enemies, and behold, thou hast blessed them altogether. And he said, and he answered and said, Must I not take heed to speak that which the Lord hath put in my mouth? And Balak said to him, Come, I pray thee with me unto another place from whence thou mayest see them. Thou shalt see but the utmost part of them, and thou shalt not see them all, and curse them from tents. And he brought him into the field of Zophim at the top of Pisgah, and he built seven altars and offered a bullock and a ram on every altar. And he said unto Balak, Stand here by thy offering while I meet the Lord yonder. So you see here that uh, Balak uh, brought Balaam uh, to Pisgah where he looked down at the tents of Israel. And from there, uh, well, there was also the place where Moses uh, saw the promised land before he died. And in this chapter, we see here uh, the utterance of Balaam concerning Israel. How um, Balaam expressed that he cannot curse a people whom God has not cursed. And it predicted for Israel, uh, William MacDonald observed well, a life of separation from the Gentile nations and a numberless prosperity. It pictured Israel as a righteous nation whose eventual destiny was something to be coveted, something that we should look for as a people of God. God bless uh, and God protect, you see. Right? The people of Israel, although they were camping, and now you, you, know, you, you, you bring yourself to another scene, okay? Uh, that you are the people of Israel now. And you are oblivious of what was happening on the top, top of Mount Pisgah or at the top of uh, 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 Mount, on the field of Zeboim, whereby the force, uh, the, the king, the enemy, uh, has brought uh, uh, the prophet to curse his people. Right. You are not aware uh, what is going on, but there is a Dark, dark dimension, as it were, right? uh, the dark side, as it were, we say, uh, they are not happy right? that God would bless His people, God would protect His people, and that because you are the people of God, um, you are protected by Him. Uh, here you see another picture, isn't it? How uh, when God uh, calls us into fellowship with Him, uh, we are a protected people. God said to Abraham, I will curse them that curse thee and I will bless them that bless thee and curse them that, that curse thee. And so here uh, you see uh, Balak uh, protesting uh, against the blessing uh, that God's seal will be upon his people. Uh, the enemy cannot Overtake us. Right. He that is in you is greater than he that is in the world. And so we have this seventh month, uh, seventh month, uh, the, the month of what uh, is called the month of the hungry ghost. Right? And if you were to go out in the night, uh, would you be afraid that, that uh, as you walk, right, you hear some noises? Uh, would you be afraid that uh, some stray spirit may uh, disturb your peace, well, do not be. Right? We say this, that uh, the Lord knows uh, who are His, and He has His Spirit indwelling us to protect us. And so when we know the truth, then we would not 
be uh, easily uh, afraid right? if you are in a room, uh, assuming that you are you are traveling and you are in a, a hotel room or you are in a place where you are alone and there's no one else there and the place seems so eerie, um, would you be afraid? Well, let's, let us not be. Right? God is with us. And the, over, the evil spirits uh, cannot overtake, cannot overcome us. So Israel... <clears throat> Right, you see, is a protected people. Right? And uh, although there were these attempts to change uh, uh, that, but uh, the enemy will fail. Right? The, the enemy will con- continue to fail. Right? They will not prosper uh, in their, in their <clears throat> plan right, to uh, disrupt the peace of God's people. So Balak then took Balaam to a different vantage point in hope that the prophet would see them in less favorable light. Verse 13 to 15. And from verse 16 to 26, we see the second attempt. Verse 16. The Lord met Balaam and put a word in his mouth and said, Go again unto Balak and say thus. And when he came to him, behold, he stood by his burnt offering and the princes of Moab with him, and Balak said unto him, What hath the Lord spoken? And he took up his parable and said, Rise up, Balak, and hear, hearken unto me, thou son of Zippo. God is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent. Hath he said, and shall he not do it? For he has spoken, and shall he not make it good? Behold, I have received the commandment to bless. He hath blessed and I cannot reverse it. He hath not beheld iniquity in Jacob, neither hath he seen perverseness in Israel, and the Lord his God is with him, and the shout of a king is among them. God brought them out of Egypt. He hath, as it were, the strength of a unicorn. Surely there is no enchantment against Jacob, neither is there any divination against Israel. According to this time, it shall be said of Jacob and of Israel, what? Has God wrought. Behold, the people shall rise up as a great lion and lift up himself as a young lion. He shall not lie down until he eateth of the prey and drinketh of the blood of the slain. And Balak said unto Balaam, Neither curse them at all, nor bless them at all. But Balaam said unto Balak, Told I not thee, saying, All that the Lord speaketh, that I must do. And so here we observe <clears throat> the second uh, attempt uh, whereby it was assured Balak that God's original blessing on Israel was unchanged, verse 18 to 20. And in verse 21, it describes the nation's position, uh, who they are, a righteous nation uh, by faith before God. So today, believers stand before God in all the perfections of His beloved Son. Uh, when God sees us, who does He see? He sees the Lord Jesus Christ. Not our righteousness, but the righteousness of Christ that is in us. And therefore, the Lord was with Israel and the people could not could shout because He reigned as the, their king in their midst. He hath delivered them from Egypt and given them strength. No evil pronouncement against them would come to pass. Instead, The victories Israel would soon win would cause the nation to say, Oh, what God has done. Isn't it so true? Oh, what God has done. When the people of God follow Him, they they will go from strength to strength, victory to victory. Since Balaam refused to curse the people, Balak ordered him not to curse them. But the prophet protested that he could only do what the Lord said. Well, we see this uh, again and again and a third time in uh, 27 to, verse 27 to 30. Balak said to Balaam, Come, I pray thee, I will bring thee unto another place, but eventually it will please God that thou mayest curse me from them, from, curse me them from thence. And Balak brought Balaam into the top of Pigo, 
that looketh toward Jessamon, and Balaam said unto Balak, Build me here seven altars, and prepare me here seven bullocks and seven rams. And Balak said unto Balaam, Did as Balaam had said, and offered a bullock and a ram on every altar. So a third time, Balak tried to wring a curse out of Balaam, said William MacDonald. This time from the top of Peor. So he thought that you know if you do, do so at different places, uh, God might change his mind. Uh, and if you do it with great ceremony, uh, this can, well, this can succeed. Proverbs 21 verse 27 says, The sacrifice of the wicked is abomination. How much more when he bringeth it with a wicked mind? What was Balak trying to do? Well, trying to uh, cause harm, right? By divination, by enchantment. Uh, we said uh, uh, black magic, white magic, right? to, to cause the people of God to fall and stumble. Nevertheless, the Lord thy God would not hearken unto Balaam. Deuteronomy 23 verse 5 says, But the Lord thy God turned the curse into a blessing unto thee, because the Lord thy God loved thee. Right? Uh, the Word of God tells us right, that He protects us. Why does He protect us? Because He loved us. He loved us. And do you see how privileged we are as the people of God? That He loved us. That we, he, he not only loved us, but He protect us. And that no harm can come to us. How privileged we are as God's people. Numbers 24 verse 1. And when Balaam saw that it pleased the Lord to bless Israel, he went not as at other times to seek for enchantments, but he set his face toward the wilderness. And you see here, uh, as we conclude... Uh, how privileged the people of God are in His sight. Right? Um, no harm can come to us without God's permission. And when He has set the seal upon us to protect us, right, that seal cannot be broken. What is that seal? The seal of the Spirit of God in us. So we, are, we must be most joyful, isn't it? We must be most thankful, isn't it? for all that God has done for us. And you would see later how um, the people of Israel would fall only when they would deliberately uh, yield to temptation. Right? If not, uh, the Lord would surely, uh, by His uh, uh, protective hand, keep them. May the Lord help us to keep looking to Him, uh, to find joy, and confidence or an assurance of His care and His love for us. Let us pray. Father, we thank Thee for Thy Word. Strengthen us for thy Holy, by Thy Holy Spirit and grant us Thy peace and joy in the Lord Jesus Christ. This I ask and pray with thanksgiving through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.